Thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody who joined the session, um, especially the hosts that we have. I really appreciate you helping me out with the session. Um, I decided to do this discussion on burnout because I do feel like a lot of people goes, go through this, um, some without even realizing it. Um, and, you know, when you're physically ill, like you have a flu, it's very easy to ask for help. Um, and to ask for support. But with burnout, you sometimes feel alone and you don't know how to ask for help or you feel ashamed to ask for help or shy. Um, but it's a reality with, with the technology and everything is just going so fast, we tend to burn out more easily. Um, that's my personal opinion. Um, so I just want to disclaim, I'm not a medical expert at all and I'm not diagnosing anyone. I just want to um, talk about burnout. Um, I want to, to share my personal story um, and yeah, hopefully this will um, lead to a very live discussion with all of us. We can do breakout rooms. Um, I see a lot of people joined, I'm really excited. So we can do breakout rooms and maybe talk about this as well. So I, I read a lot of things on the internet and I know everything is not curated or 100% accurate, but um, I think in general, you can decide for yourself. Um, you can take home what, what you want. Okay, so um, burnout um, is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion. Um, it's usually caused by excessive or prolonged stress. Uh, it can be work-related, lifestyle-related. Um, it, it can also be due to your personality traits. Uh, maybe you have a, a negative outlook on life, uh, and it can be due to something that happened in your past. Um, and then there are so many symptoms of burnout. You don't need to have all of them. Um, I think there are various levels of burnout. Um, so some of the physical symptoms include you can feel exhausted all the time, your immunity might be lowered, so you can get ill more frequently, you might see some changes in your appetite or your sleep habits, um, you may grind your teeth at night like I do, um, that's something I just can't get rid of, um, you might suffer from headaches, heart palpitations, high blood pressure, irritability, and I mean high blood pressure you can get that from genetics, right? So, but I mean, if you suddenly have these symptoms, it might indicate that something's going on. Um, emotional symptoms might include uh, that you feel overwhelmed and anxious. You might feel emotionally drained um, and, and unable to, to, get, uh, to meet your deadlines. Um, you might become forgetful and lose interest and motivation in your work. Um, you might even feel helpless and hopeless and feel alone in the world. But I do think that's like when the burnout is already advanced quite a lot. And then in terms of behavioral symptoms, you might start to neglect your personal needs. Um, you can procrastinate. So instead of actually doing something about the thing that is stressing you, um, you might actually procrastinate. Uh, you can use food, drugs or alcohol to cope. Um, you can start taking your frustrations out on others. You can start skipping work or you come late and you leave early because it's just too stressful. So you kind of avoid work. You can start to withdraw from responsibilities and isolate yourself. And also in some of, I think, in the advanced stages of burnout, you can, you can suffer from depression as well. So I want to talk about the positive things, like how can you prevent this or treat this? So, um, and as I said, I read some stuff on the internet. I did not get this from a medical textbook at all. So um, some ways that you can prevent burnout is to reframe the way that you look at your work you can try and find some value in your work. And I know this is difficult. Sometimes you start work and you literally can't afford to change jobs or just quit your job. You have to stick with it. But you need to find some value in your work. Otherwise, you will not be motivated at all. Um, and you need to some, find some balance in your work as well. You, you need to focus on the parts of your life that bring you joy. Um, it helps to make friends at work. As you all know, the Carpentries is um, an amazing support community um, and, and they support you. So if you have friends at work, it really helps um, if you have a support structure at work. Um, and then take time off. Just take some vacation or sick days and just take some time off. Take a break from work. 
And then it's important that you reevaluate your priorities. You need to set boundaries and you, learn, you, you need to learn to say no. That is something that I, I needed to learn. I could never say no to helping anyone. I always say yes. And I just think somewhere I will find time to help people, but then you start neglecting yourself and you know, eventually it learns to, to burn out. Um, it helps to take a daily break from technology. And I do find that that is more difficult to do now when working from home because you constantly need to be in Zoom meetings and answer emails and do everything online. Um, there's no personal interaction anymore, um, you know, face to face. So it's, it's a bit difficult to take a break from technology at the, at the moment, but I mean, there are 24 hours in a day, sometime you can just take a break. And then I know not everyone is creative, but you can nourish your creative side that really helps to de-stress. And then set aside relaxation time. Just like you schedule your meetings um, and anything else work related, schedule time for yourself to relax, even if it's just 10 minutes. And then get plenty of sleep. And I know this is also not um, a given. Not everybody can sleep a lot. Some people have trouble sleeping. They suffer from insomnia or they just stress so much that they can't fall asleep and they rather continue working. Um, and then make exercise a priority. And with exercise, I don't mean spending hours in the gym. I'm not a big fan of exercise myself, myself but um, I do seven minutes every day and that's it. And, and I feel much better. And then of course, eat a healthy diet. It always helps. If you eat healthy, your body has the energy and vitamins and minerals that it needs to, to function properly. And then um, I found this nice um, site where they talk about um, the three R approach to treating burnout. Firstly, recognize the signs. As I said, there's a multitude of signs and the ones that I mentioned, it's not all of them, but it can be any of them. Um, the second R is reverse the damage by seeking support and managing your stress. So if you need to find someone that can help you with your workload, or just help you relax, find a way to manage your stress. And then resilience. You can build your resilience by taking care of your physical, physical and emotional health. Um, the, more that you, the more that you do that, the better you will become at bouncing back from, from stressful events. So I just wanna share my personal story and that is how I, I came upon this topic of burnout. In 2016, in the second semester, I was still busy with my PhD. My baby was uh, uh, about nine months old. I was um, completing modules on Coursera because I had to learn to code in order to analyze some of my data. Um, I felt completely at a loss. Um, I, I'm a life scientist and I didn't know how to, to analyze big data. Um, I was also a conference secretariat because I accepted the job earlier on before I knew things would get rough. And I, so it was like a year long or, or more than a year. So I was a conference secretariat. I was supposed to take minutes and schedule meetings and things like that. So I thought, yeah, sure, I can do that while I finish my PhD. But um, the, it, it was full-time staff members from the university who volunteered to organize this international conference. But every time they, they kept saying, I'm too busy, I'm teaching, I'm sorry, I'm supervising students. So in the end, I kind of took over all the roles and tried to basically organize this conference myself. And that was really a lot of stress. Um, at that stage, I was also busy with an internship as a training coordinator. And, and in that year, I also did my instructor training for the carpentries because I really felt that it, it has so much value. And that is the direction I wanted to, to go in. But the bottom, of, the bottom line is I did too many things simultaneously. Um, I didn't sleep. Um, if I did sleep, I didn't sleep well. I still felt exhausted when I woke up. I didn't eat properly. Um, I was even skipping meals when I'm busy. I can feel I'm hungry, but then I would look at the clock and say, well, it's gonna take me about 10 minutes to walk to the student center and get something to eat and then 10 minutes back. And if there's a line, it's gonna take longer. In that half an hour, I can do 10 emails or 20 emails or whatever. Um, so I started skipping meals. Of course, it didn't work for my energy levels. Um, and 
I didn't spend time with family anymore. On weekends, I would tell my husband, like, sorry, but I have too much work. Like, I have to do this and I have to do that. So we would attend family functions alone. Um, I would stay at home and work. Um, when, I, when I came home in the evenings, sometimes I worked on campus until like 9 p.m. It was really not good. And then I would get home and then I would start working on my PhD until like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., sleep like four or five hours, get up. It was really a vicious cycle um, and that continued for like a year and um, you know, as I said, I struggled to focus and you know, my body just wasn't the same. So I realized that something needed to change. So I started saying no, that was my first step um, and I said it very politely, but whenever um, I had to, whenever somebody asked for help, I said I would love to help but at the moment I am too busy and I have too much on my plate and I would feel bad if I don't attend to your queries. So I started saying no politely. And by the end of 2016, at least, I finished my Coursera modules, or some of it. Um, two of the modules I didn't finish, but you know what? I made peace with it and said, life is life. I'm just gonna go on. Um, by March, April 2017, my internship finished and my PhD finished. And by August 2017, um, the conference wrapped up. So I decided to work during office hours and no work at home. At home, I spend time with my family. I eat vegetables. I do seven minutes of exercise. Um, and I, I, I went to bed earlier, of course, no later than 10 p.m. in the evenings. Um, and then I started doing some of my hobbies again, like painting and playing piano. I didn't touch my piano for like two years at all. So I started playing piano again. Um, and then I started teaching volunteer carpentry workshops. So you might think that well, teaching workshops again is work, but it's something I really, really love doing my volunteer work. I really love doing that. So then there came a time where I was spending so much time on my volunteer work because I really enjoyed it, that I was kind of neglecting my paid work. So I decided that I have to make something or, or start doing something about that. So then I started making a to-do list. I never really used lists that much. And I divided it into topics like or, or sections. I have an academic section for my postdoc at the moment. So if I need to finish a manuscript or do some data analysis, I put everything there in bullets and I sort them from most important or urgent to less urgent. And then I have another section for my company. I started a small company on the side where I do some small projects for people. Um, and I only say yes when I know I can do the project. I don't want to take on a big project if it's going to cause me a lot of stress. So um, I know there's a lot of people out there who can do that work. If I know I can do it, then I take the, then I take the contract. And then there's my volunteer section for the carpentries and go data and RDA. And then I have a personal section. So I would literally schedule something for myself like i'm gonna watch one episode series or i'm gonna cute x one else whatever i i make um i schedule um things for myself to do that's personal and then the last section is my wish list and that is like tutorials or learning to play violin whatever i have some it's a wish list that i have it's something that i would like to do but if i don't get to it it's fine so i try to do at least one thing from each section every day so one academic thing one company thing even if it's just reading a blog or something um, i try to do one from each so by the time that i get to the personal one I have accomplished something academic, something for my company and something volunteer work. And then I really enjoy my personal things. So that is why I put it last, basically last on the list and not first. Um, it's not that I'm not prioritizing myself or my, my emotional health, but I feel like when I get to that and I have accomplished some things during the day, I enjoy my personal session so much more and I, and I actually relax. So that is just my short story that I wanted to share. Um, and I want anyone that's willing to share to, um, to please feel free to, to share your story. Um, I think we should do breakout rooms because we are quite a lot of participants. So I just need to um, 
make him host again, sorry. There we go. Sorry, I only saw your message now. There we go. Anisha, can you? Yeah, so we got a breakout room. Yes, can we do breakout rooms? Let's do um, four breakout rooms, please. Okay, thank you. There we go. So in the breakout room, I want everybody to just talk about something that happened or something that they're going through. So do any of you want to report back from your breakout rooms to tell us um, something that you find interesting or something that you just realized um, today or something that has helped you in the past? So anyone from breakout room one? So let's start with breakout room one. So Renata and Efeni, I will give you a chance because I've been talking a lot already. Do any of you want to say something? Yeah, maybe I can just ask uh, as a as a general question to everyone in the room. Uh, how how much how comfortable do you feel actually talking about burnout in general, and and uh, how much acceptance do you see in your peers uh, in recognizing it that sometimes you may not be doing as much as you could, but that's the output that that you can that you can reach at that moment. So the so the question is is how uh, how how much of a lonely uh, experience it is, or how much support uh, do you do you feel like you you might need, and and how how much stigma there is still in in discussing these topics. I'm happy to share personal thoughts on this one. Uh, so I don't know if I, I'm probably just really lucky, but most of the people I surround myself with tend to be understanding of this. Um, I think there's also some level of blaming people for their own burnout, um, and not in a mean way, but as in a way you just shouldn't have picked this up. Um, but I think we should flip this uh, and say, actually what are we asking of these people and think twice when you ask anyone what are you asking am i giving them an out am i making sure that it's really clear that if they don't have time that they shouldn't do it um because i don't think burnout is a personal problem i mean it's something we have to deal with on a personal basis but i think that it is other people putting too much work out there and i'm probably guilty of this myself <laughs> but that you should be aware of what you're asking I think that's that's really great advice. We tend to just ask without thinking what the other person is dealing with at that moment. Um, like I say, try and put yourself in someone else's shoes. That's really great advice. Anyone else want to um, give some feedback on that for a nice question? Uh, is it Jess? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, that's Jess. correct. Yes. Um, yeah, just kind of think, thinking about what Joe was saying there. Um, something that I try to do as a manager and I'm not sure I'm very good at it and I'm not, not sure like culturally whether we are those of us who are managers are very good at this um, trying to um, help the people I manage feel confident to say actually no I can't take this this extra thing on uh, because I've already got all of these things because um, I, I need that feedback from them. I, I am not in their shoes. Um, so I can't, I try, I'm not that experienced as a manager. I'm not great at judging the people, the workload of the people I manage. Um, and I think the best I can do sometimes is to try and help them to have the confidence to say, yeah, no, hang on. <laughs> Yeah, this it relates to 
one of the things that we were discussing in our room and I've added a link to um, line 139 on the pad uh, to the Twitter thread from Malvika uh, recently that put this perfectly, I think, that we should there are two things that I think we can do as people in leadership positions, particularly within like open source projects where generally speaking, people are making contributions voluntarily, um, but may feel under pressure in other ways to be contributing um, that we can congratulate people for being able to say no, not only, learn to take no for an answer but to like actively celebrate them saying no having a good enough handle on all of their priorities and their calendar and everything else to be able to make those judgments and to congratulate yourself perhaps more quietly um, as the leader for being the kind of person who people feel comfortable saying no to um, that you should, you know, Jez just talked about what he tries to do as a manager and how that's actually helpful feedback to him. But I think it's also, you should give yourself a little confidence bump when, when that happens to, as an indication that you're doing a good job, Jez. Thanks, Naomi. That's some really good advice. Um, I, I've also found that if I find myself in company, you know, people that are negative all the time, um, I start to feel more anxious and more stressed. So um, if I feel like that, I try to find some positive people and surround myself with them. And it, it's, yeah, it's amazing how somebody else's emotions and stress can flow over to yourself. So I try to surround myself with positive people. Even though they are also stressed, we can try and make jokes or some things. Um, so, and I try to be positive myself. Like I feel, I know how I feel when somebody's negative all the time. So I think if I, I'm negative, people will not want to be surrounded by me. So I try to be a positive person. Um, and yes, listening, um, it's, it's very hard to, to really, really listen. Um, that is a skill that you kind of have to learn, um, is to really listen. And like Chase also says, humor is important for resilience. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with South African people, but we have a funny sense of humor. Like we can have load shedding and lockdown and schools are closed and whatnot. Anything can go on, but you will just see a lot of jokes immediately. <laughs> South Africans are quite funny. Okay, anyone else want to share a story? Um, some more advice or tips? So um, I think that the carpentries are really are really amazing. Um, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing this topic um, if I did not had the communities discussion previously where they talked about the burnout. And I thought to myself, like, wow, um, it, as, as Renata also said, there's the stigma. You tend not to talk about your emotional or physical, uh, your emotional or mental health. It's like, oh, I have a cold. I need to go to the doctor and get some meds. But when you feel depressed or something, you tend to isolate yourself and not mention it. But um, if you're unhealthy mentally or emotionally, it needs to be addressed. And it's really amazing that the carpentries do these community discussions and things not only related to carpentry's curricula or teaching or instructor training, but also, you know, people things like burnout and how are you coping with things? Um, I think um, I just want to say thanks to the carpentries for, for making me feel like I can share things like this. And thank you all for joining. Like I really thought nobody would join the session because people really don't want to talk about like burnout and things like that. Um, so I really, really appreciate that so many of you joined the session.
Janeka. Yes. Yeah, I think one of the important things is uh, uh, to the sessions like these is you realize that uh, other people feel the same. There are other people who, who feel the same, uh, and you recognize the um, the signs and symptoms. Because when we were breaking out, there were a lot of things that you said that I could relate to and mentioned um, the things you experience. And if if you say it in a group, and you'll see other people start acknowledging, yeah, 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 I can associate with that. Um, but if you're on your own, you, you think you're the only one that feels like that. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, I think, I, I don't know, I, I, I fortunately had, didn't have too bad experiences with, uh, once I started realizing I needed help. Um, because Newcastle University has uh, all kinds of things in place. It's sometimes a bit difficult to find it, but I think uh, when you feel bad enough, you start looking for these things and you find that there is help. Just someone to talk to, can you refer to this next person to talk to and, um, and then just try actively to implement what they suggest. Uh, like your suggestions with the to-do lists and the different groups that, uh, well, I, I started doing to-do lists but I like your idea of putting it into groups so you can see you did a little bit of everything uh, that day or what you managed to cover. And uh, I think just re being able to recognize the fact that other people feel the same things, it's not unique to you. So it, it must be a natural thing. You're not <laughs> wacky or out of um, completely different, you know? So um, there is a way to get to the other side. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so I just want to mention that resources, great resources are shared. Um, we are pasting them into the Etherpad as well. So feel free to check them out. Um, there's another one that I want to add. Um, it's from, I just need to find the link, but it's from Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, I think he wrote a, a book on this. The title is How to Stop Being Yourself. Um, and it's, it's really amazing. He had an accident. I think he was riding a bicycle and then a car um, came, you know, came passing by or something. But in any case, he had this accident and he had a really bad back injury. And several doctors said that he should really get an operation. And he just refused. I think it was a risky operation or something. But in any case, so he literally started, he started meditating um, and um, visualizing how his back would recover or would repair itself and I don't know the full story I have to go watch those videos again it's really long so it's like an hour long you have to set aside some time to watch this but you know schedule your personal time and watch one of Dr. Joe Dispenza's videos um, and it's really amazing how he kind of I, I want to say recovered all by himself I'm not sure if there was some medical intervention but um, he's, he's a video's are so amazing um, and it, it really starts with your thoughts. If you constantly have negative thoughts, then everything in life will feel so difficult and so hard um, and it would feel like you don't have energy to, to do anything. But if you feel positive all the time, um, you tend to, you're able to do more things. Um, it, it really helps and I've seen with my own children as well. Um, if I'm positive, and there's an obstacle for, for my children, something like learning to tie your shoes or something. Um, he would say, it's okay, I didn't get it right this time, but I'm gonna try again, and I'm gonna try until I get it. Um, and if he cries, um, he would sometimes say, sorry that I'm crying. And I said, don't apologize. It's fine to cry, it's your emotion. You, you can feel that, you can cry. What is making you cry? Let's work through this. Um, and I think it's important that we we teach the younger generations that it's fine to talk about these things. Otherwise, we would have a whole lot of people just isolating themselves, not talking about this and really burning out. Um, and then, yeah, so thanks Toby and Jace and everybody's sharing resources. We will make sure to copy these over to the Etherpad. Um, I think um, Anajiat is doing that. Thank you so much.
Um, so if you have any more resources to add, even after the school, feel free to post them in the Etherpad. Um, I think it's really great if we can make some time to go through this in our own time. And thank you so much, Bianca, for organising this session. It's a pleasure. Thanks for joining. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Bianca, for the um, excellent discussion and very fruitful. This is something many of us suffer from, but this is very, everybody pretends that uh, we are not suffering from burnout, so we, we, we don't acknowledge it and we are not uh, sometimes not true to ourselves. So it helps if we discuss and find out ways how to cope with it, how to manage, because uh, sooner or later, many will have to go through the burnout. So we hope to continue the discussion through community, uh, community community discussion through Slack and topic box and other mediums. So let's continue the discussion as we go along. Thank you everyone for joining this session. Thank you for hosting. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much. everyone. See you everyone, bye. Bye, bye everyone.